Welcome back to the Next Gen Profits Podcast. I am your host, mentor, and big sister, Deborah Ann Denae Feltaisen, and we are back at the DFW Cultivate Hub in Dallas, Texas, with Prophet Taurus's spiritual son, Joshua Simpson. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you on for the podcast. The invitation, for sure. You guys, today's podcast is going deep because Joshua here is an expert at therapy for prophets. And yeah. I want to delve deep into this subject because yeah. it is an untouched topic when it comes to yeah. prophets. Yeah. And it's something we desperately need. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's so necessary because I believe that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. And, and so I believe that we're in a season where God is not only just ass assessing our accuracy, but also the condition of our heart. Yes. Because it's not just about accuracy, but it's also about fluidity. Yes. And what I mean by that is, you know, I can have water come out of out of a out of a a, a spigot or out of a what a hose, but the fluidity of it and, and, and how how it's able to come out is a result of the condition of my heart. Mm. Um, does it flow out pure? Does it flow out um, in a place where God is pleased with that? And so I really do believe that God is really invested in the condition of of prophet's heart for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I want to get a little personal with you first before yeah. we jump into this hot topic. Absolutely. How did you get into therapy? How does a prophet one day wake up and just say, you know what, I'm going to get into therapy and, and begin helping people in this area. You know, actually, um, Wow, that you accent. This is actually just came to me. My childhood dream was to be the next Israel Holton. <laughs> I wanted to travel the I wanted to travel the nation. I wanted to just lead worship. I wanted to have these big powerful worship encounters where God's presence would just show up. And that was just, I was convinced that I was gonna mm. do that. And one day, I think I was in third grade. And um, you know how like they say, hey, you know, write what you wanna, you know, be when mm -hmm. you grow up. And I was like, how do you spell psychologist? And she was like, what? And she was like, I don't know, go look it up. And so I went to look it up. I was like, I think I want to do this. But it was a it was a manifestation of really some trauma that I went through and experienced in my mm. own personal life. So, and I'll say this, um, because I, I really resolved in this, but when I was around 12 or 13, my mother and father went through a very bloody divorce. Mm. Um, and I saw a lot of domestic abuse in the home. I saw a lot of abuse. And I knew that I was a worshiper all of my life. Yeah. Um, pastors and, and things like that used to always call me like the young David. Uh, I love to worship, but I, and this is really weird. And so if you're a prophet, you probably can attest to this too. But I actually did this weird thing in my home where I would get like a white sheet and I would put it over me and I would just like lay out. And, and I'm like in third grade, like, what are you doing? Um, but God's presence would literally meet me at like, say, and, and that's what the thing about, you know, prophets at very young yeah. ages, we have really weird encounters with God. Yeah. And so God would literally meet me. And one day I went to go lay out with my little white sheet and I didn't feel nothing. It was just so bare. And I was like, God, like, what is this? Like, I don't yeah. feel it. And literally as I got up to go get some water, I heard my mom and dad like first and then like literally physically fighting. And God was like, I'm trying to come into this space, but like, I can't like, there's so mm. much chaos going on. I, 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 I'm trying to meet you in this, in this space, but I can't. Mm. And so as a result of that, I'm like, God, like something has to go on. And so from that day on, I started to like really become oppositional. I'm like, y'all gotta get it right because God didn't speak to me. Like, and I was just getting like, yeah. and so from that day, I was like, I just started to get prophetic words for them. Like, hey, like, hey, you should talk to mom about this. And so I became this mm. mediator between mm. them. And I was like, and I got a level of satisfaction, a, a, a level of satisfaction from it. like. I like kind of being the mediator between traumatic issues and I don't know what this is. And so growing up from that moment, I'm, I had like people in the community saying, just coming to me randomly, you know, X, Y, and Z cheating on me. I'm, I'm like in, you know, it's fifth grade. Like, I don't need to know this. I don't, I don't really care. And it just started to make people just started to trust me and I just leaned into it. And, but when it comes to being a prophet and being prophetic, I saw how in that season of my life, when it comes to worship, when it comes to not being able to feel the presence of God, it was a result of experiencing that trauma in my, in my own mm. home um, with my mother and father kind of fussing and fighting and then seeing other domestic abuse situations. And I didn't like that there was a dissonance between my human experience and my, my, my spiritual experience. And so I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to figure out what was this rift that was happening. And so that's kind of how it all evolved. 
Mm. Oh, that's quite the journey to go yeah. on. And especially for a young child to be put in that position to mediate between a mother and a father. That's not a natural position to be no, in. No, it's not a natural position. Um, and, and it did have a lot of rifts. It did have a lot of uh, tears. But I think I learned a lot about who and how I operate now as a result of that. Um, I, I see myself also as like I, I do a lot of women's rights ally work. And so that's because... My mother was a very well-known evangelist. Um, and when she got divorced, literally I saw her traveling and speaking weekly to like to not having mm. appointments for like months at a time because mm. she was like divorced. And so just and so judging, like, wow, like this patriarchy thing is real. Um, this thing of feeling like, oh, she's uncovered because she's not married. I'm like, what the heck is this? Mm. And so I begin to study and I begin to read like. This is a thing. And I begin to see how women are affected um, by traumatic situations with going through things in their life and feeling like that they are not able to operate in ministry as a result of, you know, not being married or, or the result of whatever it may be. So those things were very traumatic for me, but I learned a lot in that. And I think that that lens of trauma has helped me because I've healed in it. It, it, has, it has now become a place of fuel for me. Um, to kind of help do the work that I do now. Mm. So how did you get that healing? And I know we've been touching on a lot of different topics, but I feel, woo, some next gen props, you pulling stuff out of him. You are pulling up. I see those. I see those children who were forced to be mediators between the parents who were fighting. I see those women who were pushed down and rejected because of the fact that you were a woman. I see all of you listening in. Keep pulling on him. Don't worry, we're getting here. God is leading you through a process of healing in today's podcast, okay? So open your heart wide, raise your hand up to the screen, touch your AirPod, whatever you need to do to receive today's impartation. Now, how did you receive the healing through all of that? You know, I didn't want to heal. And I think that we, let me just deconstruct this really quickly. We think that healing is going to be this flowery bed of ease of, oh, yes. I'm ready to heal, Lord. I'm ready to move. That is not how that happened. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of said some five words. Got like, leave me alone. Like, and so what that looked like, I went through an aggressive, and this actually, I didn't honestly start really actually healing until about two years ago. Mm. And at this moment, I had already been doing therapy work for for, for about three or four Ooh years. Wee. And so but what was happening is because I was gifted and because I knew the information and because my and because information that I've learned, because at this point, I had already been in school for about nine years, eight years at this point. So information was meeting gift. And when information and, and, and when information hits gift, you can always perform Ooh. when information. So you can read the word of God. You can get revelation and you can be gifted. And as a result of that, you're going to show up and you're going to and people are going to fall. People are going to get healed. People, people are going to get delivered. But you're still going to you're still going to go home uh, torment. It. And so at this moment, um, at, like I said, this, this is now like seven or eight years. I've got my bachelor's. I've got my master's um, and I'm now pursuing my PhD, which is where I am now. And I've already been like I, I've already been doing a lot of good work. I've, you know, mm. I'm getting I, I, at this point at this moment, I, I probably have a waiting list, not just therapy clients. I have a waiting list of about 20 people who are like, I don't care how long it's going to take. I'm going to see you. So I'm I'm, success, I'm making the money that I think that I want to make. Yeah. Um, but I'm still going home to these traumatic experiences of seeing a TV broken. And I'm like, what happened to the TV? And it's because my stepfather broke the TV. Ooh. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Right? Because he was angry. So 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 so, so these PTSD and these, these traumatic experiences are going through my head, but I'm still showing up about 55% and, I, and I'm operating off of 55% because that 55% is my gift and my knowledge. Mm. But the other part of me was my heart that I did not have to give. Yeah. And so it was about two years ago and I was actually moving, I was actually in the process of moving to North Carolina and God began to just show me the alternate of perspectives about just different things. And I'm like, no, that's not what happened. I know what happened. I was there. But what happens is we can formulate an alternate experience based upon what actually happened because that's how we protect ourselves mm. because it's not nobody wants to deal in the reality that you saw your mother be physically abused nobody wa nobody wants no. to actually conceptualize and see that i actually saw them fighting at my basketball game like like nobody wants to actually see that so i unsee that and i tell that story 
Ooh, come on. And so as a result of God, I was like, no, no, this happened. You're going to see it. And, I, and even in that, I was like, God, either you lying or I'm lying. You, you might be the one here telling, because <laughs> this, this is what I said, because I was so invested yeah. in this alternate reality because it protected me. Yes. It protected me. I moved about nine hours and God had to do that, but I moved about nine out, nine and a half hours away for my family was. And I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I went to school there and I wanted to get as far away from my family. And so I went there and in that journey, I began to heal. Um, and then this past year, I, I moved to North Carolina and I would be in my sleep and God would wake me up and God would just, it was like a film would come over my eyes mm. and I would literally see like the trauma. Like I would literally see the event come back. Like I, I would literally be driving to school or driving to campus and God would literally bring something up to me that happened and God would be like, give it to me now. Mm. And I would be like, and I have to just give it to him. Um, even a week ago, I was literally on the phone with my brother and my brother just randomly was like, you know that time when I told you to go in the room and we started fighting? I, I, told you, I told you to go in the room because X, Y, Z was happening. And I was like, huh? And God was like, and emotions started coming up and God was like, give it to me. So it's continuously still happening even now, right? Healing isn't a, a destination. Healing is a journey. Mm, it's a journey. Yes. So, and obviously I had to go to therapy myself, but that insight, I, I, I allowed God to use his prophetic power in me to reveal insight about me. Yes. Ooh, that's good. You know? Um, so yeah, so I know that's like a long answer, but short answer is I just allow God to be God in my life. And so I've just been in an aggressive season of healing and development in mm. that area. Yeah. And I like this perspective. I want to um, talk a little bit more about why is there such a stigma? Because it's obvious we all want healing. Mm -hmm. And I know you next gen prophets, you want that healing too, which is why you're listening. We want healing. We want that end result. We. So why is there such a stigma, especially in the prophetic against going for therapy and, and submitting for that counseling, especially with another person? The stigma, that's two words. That, that, that's two things. There is, and I'll go spiritual and I'll go natural. I'll go natural first. Naturally, is there, there's a stigma around anything when it comes to the helping profession or, or when it comes to the medical profession, because as a therapist, you are, we are considered medical professionals, you know, mm. because we are healing. We are um, doing, we are diagnosing. So we, and so whenever you're dealing with, Especially if you come from a a underprivileged background, or if you come from a, a certain ethnic group, you know, because traditionally and historically, things have not went in our favor. You know, you have things like even in America, you have um, like the Tuskegee experiment. You have so many things that historically have proven why we should not um, trust medical professionals mm, because you know they've used certain data to kind of analyze our behaviors that really did not align with actually what we're really doing. So there are a lot of stigmas that are there because history has proven that medical professionals do not really come to do what they say they want to do. Yeah. Um, and so that's number one. Two, I think one of the reasons why a lot of prophetic people, prophets, don't really engage therapy is because there is this Old Testament perspective that it's me and God. Mm. It's me and God. But there's a reason why we call him wonderful counselor. Um, th there's a reason why we call him that. And so I think that we have to kind of come out of that Old Testament model of, you know, I'm just going through this, you know, in the cave by myself. You know, God, this is this between me yeah. and God. I'm going through the season of warfare by myself and nobody else knows. No, there are 10,000 who have not bailed. You just have not found them yet. And so I think that the more we kind of disassociate from that Old Testament model of, of I'm going through the rough side of the mountain by myself. Yeah. When we disengage that theology of, of the Old Testament covenant with prophets and really coming to the New Testament uh, with that we do live in community. We do live mm. amongst the people and that we are supposed to confess our faults one to another. I think when we come into that, I think we can kind of dismantle some of that. Mm, that's so good. Now, I want to talk to you as a counselor. Okay, okay. So we had a brief conversation before mm -hmm. this podcast. I shared some of the trauma and experience that my husband and I went through in 2020 with the mm -hmm. birth of our twins. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had to face this fear in me of I was hiding behind my trauma. And I see a lot of prophets and I even see you guys, my prophetic champions who are hiding behind our trauma. We say, this is what we went through. This is what God took me from. Always past tense. Uh-huh, always past tense. Mm -hmm. And there comes this guilt on us, I feel, when mm -hmm. we have to face the fact that I'm not fully 
healed. What would you say to those prophets who are carrying around that guilt of realizing that I've done that, I've, I've given it to the Lord. Every time the memory came up, I gave it to the Lord. I did it all, but still there seems to be this scar on my character that I just can't get rid of. Mm -hmm. There's this saying um, that my granddad used to say, he said, can't build a plane at the same time you're trying to fly it. And so I think a lot of times we're trying to engage ministry. We're trying to do this different. We talked about this yesterday in our session yesterday that the only way that you can really heal and, and, and navigate healing is you have to be in a safe environment. That's one. I, I really believe that safety is the seeding bed for healing. And so you have to make sure that you are in a safe space, one, that so that you can heal. And for me, that looked like Atlanta, that looked like North Carolina. Now I had to be in a space that I could be by myself so that God could reveal himself to me. Um, that's number one. Number two, I would say that this also looks like us allowing ourselves to be okay to sit with self. Mm. When I was in Atlanta, I knew that it was time to go because like every weekend, I mean, every day, I had people, I, I love to cook. So I had people at my house every single day. You know, we, we would have like, you know, like New Year's Eve party. We would have like, just, we would just always just do mm -hmm. different things. Yep. And it was because I hate being lonely because being by myself for so many hours, like I had like that trauma start to come up and I didn't want to deal with that. So I'd be like, hey, what you doing? Let's go to brunch. Hey, what you doing? Like, let's go, let's go to lunch. Let, let's go to breakfast every day. And I was spending so much money just trying to like go out to eat or whatever, because I did not want to be alone mm. because being alone said something. And the message that being alone provided, I did not want. So that's why a lot of times we stay booked and busy on the road. And, you know, we make our honorariums and, yep. and, and God does show up because God is going to be God. Why? Because information, right, meets gift. And when information meets gift, a product, whether it's God or not, a product is going to happen. Yep. And so as a result of that, we validate, okay, you know, what God still would be, God still would be, God, God almost like Samson, yep. um, you know? And so what happens is God shows up or something shows up and we validate, okay, well, I'm okay. And so um, for me, I think that was the biggest thing is I validated that I was okay because I got a product every time. Yes. Ooh. And mm. even if I am broken, I'm still functional. Mm. And I know what this is, but I, I feel like the Lord um, is, it wants to take the prophetic culture from being, uh, from moving and being funct, from being broken um, to now engaging. Like, yes, you're functioning, but you're still broken. God wants to really navigate you through spaces and, and, and you're validating that you're okay. I hear this. I'm okay. I'm okay. And what you're really saying is I'm functional. I'm functional. I'm functional. I'm mm. functional. I'm functional. I'm cool. functional. And I really feel like what the Lord is saying is that he really, for some of us, it's really going to look like confessing that fault, finding a brother, finding a therapist and allowing God to fix the areas that are broken. Mm. You can have a, you can have a, um, <laughs> this thing just came back to me. My grandmother, um, she was, she was very frugal. Mm -hmm. And before they bought anything, they would, they would, they would repair it five times over. <laughs> and they had this infamous remote that me and my cousin joke about today. And I actually still got down using it no more, thank God. But they had this remote that they would just duct tape and duct, and I'm like, just go to the store. It's only like $5. Get a replace remote. But the fact that that remote was functional even though it was broke, it was valid that it needs to still be used. Oh, come on. And I feel like what God is wanting to do is he, he wants you to stop navigating. He wants us to stop navigating life, saying that we are OK because we are functional. I really feel that. I really feel that God is really calling many of you yes. uh, to sit with self. Many of you. I don't know what, I even see this, I see even a lot of you have like, yes. there's been seasons where it's like, it's not rejection. It's like, God, like I've been calling them and they ain't picking up the phone. I've been, I've been calling X, Y, Z, and they ain't picking up the phone. God is like, mm -hmm. yes, like I've literally removed the crowd. 
and you're the only person here. And I have you in this space because I want to deal with not the functional part of you, but the broken part of you, because your gift is going to always be whole. Your gift is going to always. But what God is invested in now is your soul, your spirit. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift come from the Lord. So God, when you got saved, when you got born again, God mm-hmm. gave you a spirit that was already perfect. That was already. So you don't need spiritual development. You need soul development. Yes. And I really feel like what God wants to do is yes. even in these moments, I even feel this where you're even beginning to yes. feel lonely. And you're beginning to feel like I, I um I see like even like around the, the hours of, of like 11 p.m. to 2 p.m. It's like a weird time for you yes. where like it's like he's like, God, I need to go to sleep. 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 And you feel the most loneliest between the areas of, ele- of 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. And God is saying in that moment, what I'm doing is I want you to begin. I want you to begin to um, get a journal. The Lord says to get a journal and mm-hmm. begin to sit with me. And I'm going to begin to. I'm going to begin to show you the hidden parts of you that you've tucked away. Yes. And you're going to begin to journal. And this is going to be something that you're going to begin to release to many people. And this is going to be uh, the um, the the transcendence of a new season for you as yes. you begin to tell that story. God's not only invested in your gift, but he's also invested in your story. The hidden parts of yourself that you've been hiding away, that you've been tucking away. God mm. wants that in this moment. Yes. Don't just render your ear, render your heart. Yes. As a prophet, you've been giving God your ear. He's going to always use your ear, Mm. but God wants your heart. Yes. Mm. God wants your heart. For indeed, says the Lord. Yeah. I've called you to expose the hidden intents of the heart. And in order to do that, I need to look at the hidden parts of your heart. It's time to go on a journey, my dear. You have fought me. You have pushed back against me. You have stood and you have worshipped me. And I say, well done, good and faithful servant. But I don't need a servant in this season. I need a son. Yes. I need a daughter. I need my child to step up and come into my arms that I may comfort their souls. That I may comfort you in your wounding and in your weakness. Because it was the child whom I called. It was the child that stood between their mother and their father fighting against the spirit of strife, fighting against the demons that were manifesting in them. It is the child that was rejected and that was bullied in school. It is the child that was forced to grow up beyond their time. The child that faced that physical and that sexual abuse alone and felt it was their duty to carry it so that the family would not be torn apart. It was that child whom I called, says the Lord. And I am calling you out again this day that I may heal you, that I may reach you, and I may call you back to purpose because the adult today does not have the same purpose that the child back then had. For the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy the very innocence that I placed in you from your mother's womb. And so I call you back to innocence this day. And I call restoration to your soul. I see some of you who have already been on this journey. You have already faced some of this trauma. And the Lord says, I am restoring your soul soul this day, says the Lord. I am restoring it back to factory settings. And we are going back and you are going to think like a child and you are going to speak as a child and you're going to act like a child and you are going to do childish things because from there I will teach you how to grow up once again says the Lord yeah 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 that's it yeah yeah like there's a reason why the manifestation of God in flesh started with him as a child like like we literally begin to see and like like we literally see Jesus in his disadvantaged state, being born in a manger. We literally see him then grow up and say that birds have nests and foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay. Like, like we literally get to see God in human flesh grow up from being um, a child to being an adult. And God wants the world to see you in that same way. Mm. We need to see you grow up from your child, from your state of being a child to now being able to grow up in manifestation of who God has called you to be. From the beginning to the end, we need every part of your story, every part Mm. of who God has called you to be. Yes. We are ending off this podcast. I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that question, Joshua, how can these prophets remain connected to you and hopefully maybe come and receive some counseling and some breakthrough? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, So definitely, I want you guys to follow me on Instagram at Joshua D. Simpson underscore Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A-D, 
Simpson, S-I-M-P-S-O-N underscore on Instagram. On Facebook, it is Joshua D. Simpson. And then you can also go to my website at joshuasimpson.org. Um, definitely get connected to me. And then on my website, you will definitely also see my um, email address. If you're saying, hey, I, and I need more counseling, I feel like you resonated with, with what I'm saying, please connect to me. Um, my, my goal, my, my burden is to help prophetic individuals. So definitely please connect to me. You can find all of that information in the show notes below. So make sure you go and get connected. Make sure you follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Guys, we are in the turn of the century in the prophetic. God is raising up those that don't just prophesy, but heal the souls and the hearts of man. So my last question to you, Joshua, mm-hmm. before we end this podcast is, what is one word of wisdom you would like to leave behind for the next generation of prophets? God is equally invested in the journey as he is a destination. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I see in prophetic ministry, like for the prophet that I even talk to and counsel, one of the main things that I always see reoccurring is anxiety. Mm. In prophetic culture, because there's this notion of the future, the future, the future, the future, because we're always seeing ahead. We're always seeing ahead. And so we're living in this tension between the future and, and dealing with our past, but also now living in, in, in the current of the present. And so there's this, there's this vacillation between I see here, I live here, but I'm also experiencing back there. And so that that causes this anxiety. And in all of that, I want you to know that God is equally invested in what you see there, the destination as he is right now, where you are right now, which is the journey. So and and, and, and a scripture reference for that is the story of 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 of, of the children of Israel. We always say, you know, we always know that it was supposed to take, you know, not as long, things, things like that. But if it did not take the time that it took, they would have never seen God manifest uh, manna and quail. They would have never seen uh, yes. God be a Come covenant on. keeping God. They would have never seen him be a pillar of fire by Come day and, a, and a, a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They would have never seen any of that if it was only focused on getting to the destination. And it's the journey that you'll be able to see all of those different things. Come on, so, you guys. Yeah. Woo! Come on. You are on a journey. And we are here. We are invested in your calls. So be sure that you are checking out www.nextgenprofits.org, connecting with Michael and I. Submit that free application to set up your one-on-one appointment with Michael and I so that we can invest into your journey. We can give you the impartation you need to accelerate your prophetic destiny. This is your big sister signing out. Joshua, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and giving this impartation. Absolutely. We will see you guys all next week. Bye for now.